Good day to one and all. This is Dr. Sivaraman of iNowIndices.com. So I'll be presenting three webinars today. And also I displayed it in fxtrade.net in the blog that with the title, Is Market Look Weak or Bearish? Looks like a falling knife or feel like keep away from that of the market. Okay, then I wanted to answer to these questions during my three webinars, webinar one, webinar two, and webinar three. I'll be presenting during different times of the day, during each session. So between 5 and 5.30 GMT, I'll be presenting now the Asian session live market analysis. Then between 8 and 8.45 GMT, I'll be giving tracking the Forex market together part one and there I will be explaining about the trading strategy and that will be during that of the start of the European session and part two will be during the start of the US session between 14 and 1445 GMT. So now we will do the market analysis during Asian session live market analysis. So yesterday I was supposed to give the expected market moves for this particular week. But unfortunately, I had some other work, so I was not in a position to present the webinar. So today, I am presenting it on 9th of September between 5 and 5.30 GMT and explain the expected market moves for this particular week, 8th to 12th. Already, you have seen the moves on 8th. And everybody might have developed the fear and be afraid of the market or probably develops the bearish feel and some of the people might think that okay it is better to stay away stay away from the other market so but what the focus says now this is the second week of the month of september so it is going to be the trending time they are expected to make the trending moves in the market and the trending move is expected to be swing and form of moves and you know that last week on Thursday, when I was presenting the webinar, I was explaining to you that for that of the ECB and the for that of the BOA and the ECB interest rate decisions, they are expected to make the drop in the case of euro and GBB. And for decimal non farm payroll, they are expected to rise euro and GBB. So exactly they did the same. And now, Yesterday, there is a second week of the month, uh, second week. Of, so the trending time starts. So during that of the trending time, what you come across is invariably the week beginning false move. So week beginning false move, they made a quick drop and then slide. And so instead of a swing and slide, they made a quick drop. And then in the case of GBP alone, but not in other currencies. Other currencies were opened flat and only GBB and by creating the hype, they just made the drop. And some say it is rumor, some say it is because of voting all attributes. Ultimately, we need to find out why the players have dropped GBP suddenly like this. And I was explaining during that of the last week webinar that they are expected to make during that of the second week a yeah, extended downward stop and before making the reversal and an upward move so that nobody holds a buy position when they are rising to book profit. It is such a nice good intention you know, so that nobody should be able to book profit other than that of the players. So in such a good intention they try to make such a big drop and you know that GBV Euro has come down to that level of 1.28 and you know that last year during that of the Greece crisis they brought down like this and the attribute may be different but they can drop the market as they wish or rise the market as they wish. Just about one and a half months back they have been holding around 1.40 in the case of Euro and one point. 7150 in the case of GBB, creating all the bullish hypes. 
no at that time on many days the us data was positive but the continue to rise euro and cbp at that time made a frequent upward stop and during that of the high level consolidation then from there they had dropped it and i was explaining to you that they are going to drop it in a big way and now they had done all the drops till that of last week and reversed using non farm payroll but before that what the players intend to do is they have to accumulate huge buy positions how they will be able to accumulate huge buy positions only by dropping the market when they quickly drop about 100 to 200 pips you no know, last friday uh, thursday they dropped euro 200 pips and yesterday they dropped gbp 200 pips so when they drop like that people become panic and distress selling happens distress long liquidation happen okay fine when all are liquidating somebody is buying is he a fool to buy in a falling knife and they are the most clever people on earth and they accumulated the buy positions by inducing the fear among that of the traders so they heard of traders liquidate the long positions because of the margin fear and whereas the players don't have the margin fear they trade with that of the banks and they do have to give the margin but they have trillions and trillions of do- billions of dollars so they don't have any margin pressure with that of the bank and they are in a position to drop and keep all the sell orders at the lower level so that either you can buy or liquidate to them so they keep the buy as well as the sell so you are forced to sell at the lowest level like in a bidding arena sometimes you know that in auction centers they just auction certain material and they will just uh, ask their own people to uh, bid at the highest level and so if at all you want to go in for auction participate in that auction you have to bid slightly higher than that of the bid already given so they create an artificial demand for that product and then auction it similarly in a gambling den what they do is they ask the people to play and then what happens when all the their own people play they earn huge profit and that induces the traders to participate in it and try to bid in a similar way but the traders or those who are visiting the gambling den they lose but their own people might be making profit and that is by circular trades so here all the drops they have done it only by circular trades and now you know that yesterday during the start of the market they straight away dropped 100 pips in the case of gbp and that we call it as a gap opening then from there they made another 100 pips drop and then recovered a portion of it and again they made a new drop in the case of gbp so when they do like this people will immediately develop the bearish feel and i have been telling many times gbp is the currency they use it in order to create the market sentiment so they have used it effectively even though you know very well you become a fried now so what you have to do is the only way to sustain in this market is using the trading strategy so let us see first of all the expected market moves for this week so yesterday they made the firm up move from that of the european session late european and us session also they formed up and then then they lost the levels what they gained and again they had made the dip today and if you see that negative net change but it might appear a big fall but when you compare to that of yesterday's close level euro has dropped only 15 pips gbp has dropped only 27 pips and australian dollar has dropped about 22 pips so keep that in mind so always look into that of the net change to so that that will eliminate the fear in your mind otherwise you will think that gbp is continuously dropping but all through yesterday they have been holding above 1.61 and 
1.6174, that's how they have been oscillating it. And then they breached 1.61 and came down to 1.6064 after 3.30 GMT exactly in order to make a downward move and started recovering. It's finished. They increased the spread by that. Then they are holding it. So automatically the traders will think that now there could be further fall when Europe starts. So the people will try to take sell and buy bets. And later on, we will know how exactly the players are going to trap traders. And because they create the market sentiment, and when the traders take in line with it of the market sentiment, then they trap the traders. Until such time, in order to establish the market sentiment, they make the circular trade and drop quickly. So we know very well quick moves or false moves in the market. Now today they made the dip and they are expected to firm up towards close of Japanese session and during the European session swing and slide moves are expected in order to create the uncertainty and then swing and firm up move is expected during the US session. So this week they will try to create in such a way that any rise is a pullback SL opportunity. That is how they will create that impression. And then again, tomorrow, they're expected to make the swing and slide move. Then from tomorrow, mid-session, they are expected to make the rise. So till such time, they will only firm up, slide, firm up, slide, firm up, and start rising from midweek. And then swing and firm up from there as an intentional move. And then on Thursday, during the, the Japanese session, they are expected to make a swing and upward spike move. Then everybody will think that, okay, market has reversed. I could have taken a buy. I was willing to take a buy, but I was afraid. That is how all will start giving the comments. So in order to avoid what you are supposed to do, you have to follow trading strategy. So it is not that you, you will be able to trade in line with that of the forecast. Ultimately, whatever the forecast we derive, there can be an element of error or sometimes our equity may not allow us to participate in the market. In such a scenario, if you use the hedging, if the position is hedged, we can book profit in the hedging on the downside and keep the hedge order. When the spike up, you simply move that hedging order upward so that on the downside you are participated and then continue to participate on the upside. So either way trades, you will be able to do it during that of the trend reversal time. Then after the spike up, they are expected to make a swing and slide move during that of the European session. They will discourage during that European session that buy and sell trade. And you know that when they have been rising from that 1.36 to 1.40 level, in the case of Euro, they have been making all the rise or most of the rises during that of the European session. And then they will hold the rise level or make for the rise or make sideways move during that of the US session. And this time again, you will come across during the European session, they will discourage, they will make a slide and buy. And after that, they will make the rise. So follow it carefully. Don't lose your heart and use the trading strategy to participate in the market. Bottom fishing, will be really nice, but provided you know how to do that. Then swing and rise move is expected during the, the US session on Thursday, and then swing and slide is expected on Friday. Then afterwards, they are expected to make a swing and form up move during the European session, and then swing and rise during the, the US session. Then afterwards, everybody will say that, okay, market has breached the resistance, so resistant turns support. Then afterwards, next Monday, what will they will do? Big beginning false move. Yes, Clyde. When people go in for a breakout trade, they'll just drop and induce them to liquidate the long position. Afterwards, continue to rise. So this is what they're going to do it as big beginning, big beginning false move. Then Tuesday, they will make either way moves. And Wednesday, they will start making the directional move. And then you find sudden trending move happening in the market. So follow this, you will be able to see that really you are able to capture 
the best possible profit from the other market for that you need to be an opportunity trader don't simply take the position when they are in subdued levels whenever they make a quick move and they are closer to the level low then you try to take a buy and keep 30 pips hedge order and once the position makes profit keep stop at entry if they filled the stop it doesn't matter you wait for 30 minutes and see where they are forming the new low then again once the low is not been breached for 30 minutes take a buy and keep 30 pips hedge order that way if you do it you will not incur any huge loss and once you move stop at entry then if they even go lower that is not a matter much but after filling your hedge and if they continue to make a big profit then okay they are making a downward extended move in order to reverse the market once they form the new low book profit on the sell side and keep on the hedge order below and then rise the hedge order along with it of the rise in the market so when they create the bearish feel understand they are the buyers when they create the bullish feel understand they are the sellers now coming to the dot of the levels it was expected to hold around 2950 but they come down to 2877 and for downward move to 2867 and you know that you might find the 200 day moving average or any type of moving average will fall here but the players will try to breach and try to see that you become confused and liquidate or become a fried and don't take a buy at the lowest level then afterwards they rise and you know once they rise people go in for a breakout trade they will just be discouraged by making one more dip so you find that low level consolidation with downward stop and will be the type of move till wednesday then afterwards they will try to rise the market so euro is expected to go up to that of 30 to 50 in this process then gbb it was supposed to hover around that of 60 to 25 with an extended downward move but they had just come down still to 60 90 around 330 and now 60 64 you no know? and afterwards they are expected to gain much faster you know gbb is the currency which will be setting the trend in the market suddenly you will find from bearish to bullish and they will spike up two times and straight away reach all the higher level and they don't give any trading opportunity to any of the traders after gaining all the levels they will simply hold people will think that okay we can go in for a breakout trade all the resistance are turned to support then the traders will buy but after gaining quickly about 600 pips or 500 pips the players will distribute their buy positions to the rest of the market and they become sellers then after selling it make a small downward stop and because they know very well after the rise when the traders go in for a breakout trade they keep the stops they just hit all the stops and then continue to rise so in this month of september will come across the gaining moves in the case of euro and gbb and also gaining moves in the case of the denominator currencies usd and usd chf so alternatively you will come across the gains and in the case of the commodity pairs they are expected to make the usd gaining move straight so now if you think that australian dollar is expected to rise along with that of gbp and euro you will find the surprise they will simply hold australian dollar gain euro and gbp so watch that and carefully do it and because many traders have got the tendency when euro has dropped and gbp has not dropped then they take sell position in gbp and you know that last time euro and gbp were have dropped but aussie was not dropping then they had taken the sell but what the players have done they just gained further up to 9370 and hit all the stops of the short sellers afterwards started making the drop now if you think that okay aussie is less corrected so it is better to take a buy position in aussie when euro and gbp have gained already you'll find aussie will simply hold and continue to fall so don't go with that of the market sentiment understand the players intentions
Now, in the case of yen, from 105 to 107.50, they are expected to go. Already, they have gained it up to 106.34. This is what I was telling you, that they will make the one-sided move in the case of denominator currencies. And there are traders who think that, who are thinking that they can do either way trades in the case of denominator currencies. And they are taking the sell positions. And, you know, the players make the wide range swings for a few days, around 103, 104, inducing the traders that they can do sell and buy also. Then subsequently, they started gaining the levels. If you try to take a sell, they will make only about 10, 15 pips drop. And if you are not happy with the profit, they will gain another 50 pips. All one-sided gains they are expected to make in the case of the denominator currencies. And you know that CHF was the currency wherein people were thinking that, okay, we can do sell and buy trade. When it was around 91, many people were telling that we can go in for a sell and buy trade in the case of USD CHF. But now what they have done it, they have gained it to 93 level and 93, 71, 93, 80. So they will again continue to gain the levels. And you will find that euro and chip will be gaining levels slowly. And at that time, USD yen and USD CHF will not make corresponding drop. Then you will understand what is one-sided move. So from that of yesterday, 1.0881 level, they started gaining in the case of USD CAD. And it has come to 1.10, the psychological level. And they are expected to make one sided rise again as the USD gaining move in the case of USD CAD. And also in the case of Australian dollar, they are expected to continue to make the drop slowly. You'll find a big drop is expected in the case of Aussie around 700 to 800 pips. So keep that in mind and trade accordingly. Now coming to that of the market reading. So we find that they said the initial lows and the highs are on 330 GMT and these are all the levels 1.2877 was the low in the case of euro and they came down to 1.2867 and gone above that of 1.2877 now so we can understand that they are just done a 10 pip stop and after 330 and now we are come to that of the late Japanese session. So they are expected to form. And in the case of GBP, they just came down from that of 60.82 to 60.64 and holding below that. And GBP, since it has dropped more and it will slowly gain when Euro is gaining the levels. So they will create that market feel by gaining more levels in the case of Euro to start with. And GBB will follow and later on you will find GBB will take over and quickly make upward spikes and then you will find Euro following GBB. That they do it mainly in order to handle Euro GBB cross. Then in the case of Yen, 105.95 is the low, they have not come down whereas they have breached the high and 106.28 was the initial high they went up to 106.34 and come down so they could come down and make a downward stop and briefly and then start gaining the level so in the case of denominator currencies if you want to trade on the first day and the second day when they are gaining don't try to participate they will make either way swings and keep it in a narrow range and later on they will try to make big moves initially from Wednesday onwards on the upside. Then afterwards, Euro and JPB will gain. So that way they will try to do is as a contrarian move and simultaneously they will not move all the four. Okay, They will gain the levels in the case of denominator to start with and later on hold it and gain the levels in the case of numerator and the commodity pairs are expected to make the USD gaining move. That way, they are expected to make the contrary rain move till end of the year. Then, in the case of CHF, 9351 is the low, 9380 was the, 9371 is the initial high, and they just breached and gone above. 
and come down. So they are expected to make either way stop points and consolidate here. Only good trading opportunity is seen, then you should enter. Otherwise, keep away from such currencies. There's no point in taking. And also, you know very well, the spread has to be more than 40 pips in order to enter into a currency. Then Canadian dollar, 1.0972 is the low, and that is what. And when it comes to 1.0986, that is the level three times they have come. Two times they have come and reversed and came down. Third time they have come and just made the breach of it. So they don't do hat trick. And they are expected to continue the gain in the case of Canadian dollar. And Australian dollar, 9262, they have breached and formed 9251 and holding below to make for the fall. And 9288 is a high which is not breached. So now we can understand that they are making as per the expectations of a forecast, the moves, so you'll find that the bullish feel or consolidation and rise will be seen initially in the case of Euro, followed by that GBB, but Aussie will be holding non-participative. And whenever there is a small drop in Euro for 20-30 pips, GBB about 30-40 pips, Aussie will drop about 70-80 pips. Okay. Then again, when there is rising Euro, GBB about 20-30 pips, Aussie, they will simply hold it with 10 pips gain or sideways. So that is how they are going to make the moves in the market. And they will initially gain the levels in the case of denominator currencies, followed by that the gains in the case of numerator currency. At that time, the denominator currencies will be making narrow range swings. <coughs> okay. With regard to the market reading, I'll explain more during that of the uh, uh, tracking the forex market together webinar. Today I'll be presenting at 8 GMT during the start of the European session, 30 minutes from the start of the European session. And so 7.30 the European session starts. I'll start the webinar by 8 GMT and up to 8.45. During early session, I'll try to take the positions and try to close the position during that of the late session and show you the result during that of the 14 GMT next 30 minutes from the start of the US session. I will commence the second part of the tracking the forex market together webinar and explain to you how exactly the profit was booked and how we are able to follow the forecast and find to the forecast using the market reading. Even though we commit the positions still we do not want to be ambiguous or we do not want to be overconfident. So we always keep 30 pips hedge order against that of the position what you have taken. And once the position makes profit, we'll keep stop at entry. Until that position is in loss, we'll keep the hedge order to limit the loss. loss. Once the position makes profit, we'll keep stop at entry and eliminate the risk. So these are all the steps we will follow in our trading strategy. And also I'll explain to you the type of moves they do it and how exactly we can plan our trading using the trading strategy during that particular webinar time. So let me answer to the questions which are asked here. If any has got a question, uh, may you please explain again how they do the contrarian move for EN and GBP. Okay. Now you come across USDN is in positive net change, 23 pips. And then GBP is 28 pips negative net change. So that means they are making the USD gaining move. Then slowly, when they are making the USD gaining move, then GBBM will be almost flat because on one side a positive net change another side negative net change so you don't find much of a change here so it is almost flat then what they do is they hold euro and they hold jbb and gain the levels in the case of usd yen not immediately today 
I'm talking about tomorrow. So today they are expected to make sideways moves in the case of yen. And later on, they are expected to gain yen first after a brief downward stop point, about 60-70 pips. Then hold yen similar to this. See, you know that yesterday yen was trading around 105. From there they gained the levels. <coughs> so about 100 pips. Whereas in the case of euro, they just dropped only about 40 pips. And from there, now it has come to 27 pips negative net change. So that is how they do it. So you will think that, okay, they are moving in tandem. Actually, they have gained more levels in the case of USDN to 106 from 105. And you know, from 105, 104.99 was the low they set yesterday. And from there, they have already gained about 125 pips. And then what happened? They will try to gain about 50, 70 pips in the case of USDN, hold it there with 10 pips swing, then start gaining the levels in the case of GBP. That is how they will do it. At that time, you will find you know, GBP and cross will continue to gain the levels. Whenever N is gaining, you will find the gaining in the case of USD N this time. So when GBB is gaining, USDN, they will hold it. So they will not make corresponding USD weakening more at that time, in the case of denominator currencies. Then Aditya, I am struck in a lower level cell, 1.721217 in GBP. See, this is what, you know, when people think that... Uh, the spread is very big in the case of the commodity crosses like the Euro CAD, then GBP Australian dollar, etc. They get struck vulnerably because they make about 250 pips, 300 pips move because of low volatility, low volume. So if you don't use the hedging order to limit the risk, you will be caught unaware. And my humble suggestion will be when the position is not making making profit for two hours, then close the position. Because if you try to hold, when they continue to rise in one single trade, the margin call might be attracted. No? So, in the case of JBB Australian dollar, when I say so many times that Avoid trading in crosses if you are a small trader. You people don't listen. And you think that that is going to give more profit out of greed and later on suffer and lose big money. If you trade Euro and GBB, similar condition. If you suppose you hold a long position in GBB around 1.63, you'll be able to see profit. But if you simply hold in the case of cross, what they are going to do, they are going to rise GBP and drop Australian dollar. <coughs> no? And they have gained the levels because GBP has dropped more and Aussie has dropped less now. And denominator is Aussie. When they just come down, try to watch and close it with a minimal loss. Because you know that commodity crosses, they make one-sided gains. And, you know, in the case of uh, Eurocad, they made the one-sided drop earlier. So that is how they make the moves. So you will not be able to withstand such one-sided moves, please. Please understand that trading is not simply taking uh, a risk which you will not be able to bear and which will be beyond your control. So you can aim for big profit. At the same time, understand such big profits are high-risk trades. If you are capable of taking high-risk trade, then what you have to do is keep adequate equity like 50K of usable margin or a free margin and take one position and keep the limit order to close it and simply watch and simply wait for the market to make the move in your favor and close it. To try to accumulate more positions, it might lead to severe over trading. Then you will simply say that I am struck. 
So at least now, in the case of GBPRC, keep about 50 pips away from the other market. The hedge order to limit the risk so that there is no margin fear to start with. Then ciao kid. Thank you for the good call in USD and now how we handle USD Aussie today. Uh, I mean, so okay, we are asking about Aussie USD, I suppose. Aussie is expected to come down and which is not expected to gain continuously in tandem with that of Euro and GBB from this time onwards. So try to do only sell and buy whenever there is a pullback you try to take sell positions and book profit during the trade. Uh, then in here you see Euro and GBB will rise do you recommend us to buy Euro Australian dollar and GBB Australian dollar sir Euro USD that is what I was telling they, it will rise. GBB USD will rise. And you know that Euro Aussie, Euro is a numerator currency. Aussie is a denominator in that cross. So when they gain more levels in the case of Euro and they drop in the case of Aussie, what will happen? It will have a nullified effect. Please understand they are all nothing but the ratios and put some values and try to find out what will happen to that. Then later on, take such decisions. So don't try to make a corollary. Don't try to make a correlation simply just because Euro Aussie is giving good profit or making a big spread. And whenever you find the, the, when the volume is very low in such crosses, the volatility will be very high. And they make such contrarian moves and try to bring in more volatility on one side it moves in the case of crosses. Understand what what way they are going to move it and accordingly take positions. Since I do not uh, recommend with the small traders trading in crosses, I will not give much calls on them, please. You should excuse me. Yeah, this webinar is being recorded. It will be available, sir. Venkat Ramana has got a question. Euro N and USD N will still rise or drop. See, USD N is expected to make sideways move and then slowly gain the levels. And Euro N is expected to gain the levels slowly. And whenever you find Euro is gaining more level or USD N gaining more level with regard to net change. Now, if you find Euro is in 16 pips negative net change and N is in 23 pips positive net change, you find nullified effect in the case of Euro N, only 12 pips positive net change. So whenever you find more gain in the case of Euro or more gain in the case of USD N, you'll find Euro N will go. <coughs> okay, right now I am hedged in GP Gauzy. So once the position makes profit, keep stop at entry, and whenever they make a quick drop, in the case of GBP Aussie, you try to see that uh, you close the hedge and try to close the original sell position and turn long because the weightage for Euro and GBP is more when compared to Aussie. So as a result, you will find slowly gaining levels in them. Then Can you please give info on silver derivative? Okay, gold and silver are expected to slowly gain the levels along with that of Euro and GBP in this particular quarter. So no more questions. So I'll just wind up my webinar. I'll come back again during that of the European session and explain to you this is the forecast. Expected market moves, try to watch whether market is moving in tandem with the other forecast or against. And we will meet again by GMT and we will try to focus more on the trading strategy part of it. All the three webinars will be recorded and so you can listen to them together to understand overall how the market has to be read 24 hours using the simple live market code page.
Thank you one and all. See you. Bye. AGMT.